We now enter our last section of chapter four. And at first glance, it seems like this particular section doesn't really have a lot to do with the rest. It's not talking about regression at all, but it is still talking about bivariate data. That is, we're dealing with two different variables that are related to each other. But in this particular instance, we're dealing with qualitative data as opposed to quantitative data. So 4, 1, 4, 2, and 4, 3 are bivariate, but they're quantitative bivariate. That's how you get wonderful graphs like scatter plots and stuff. It's because these and residual plots, these variables here are numbers, the number of children per woman, the percentage of females that can read and write. Okay. Now down here in 4.4, 4, we're going to be working with um, qualities, or sometimes one's a quality and one's a number, or things like that. They're going to be categories. So what I chose was the number of Harry Potter movies that people have seen, just for the heck of it. And um, there are the numbers, right? There's eight movies total. So I asked a class, um, obviously you wouldn't have these numbers going in, so just you know, bear with me. I had a classroom full of students and this were the numbers that they came up with. All right. So there you are. I write them all down. This is called a contingency table. Um, it has, or a two-way table because it has a, a row variable and a column variable. Speaking of which, what is the column variable? The column variable is the number of Harry Potter movie scene. And then the row variable would be gender right and gender remember from chapter one is a qualitative thing right not a quantitative thing that's why um, this particular data set works better as a contingency table not as um, regression it's not gonna work all right every single one of those boxes is called a cell for example um, this cell right here is the cell for two um, sorry, cell for zero movie scene female. So there were two women in the room that had never seen any of the Harry Potter movies. All right, so now we're going to build something called a marginal distribution. So let me type in my numbers again. 0, 1, 0, 7, and then this one was 2, 10, 4, 8. Okay, so the marginal distribution is saying um, it's a frequency, find the frequency, or relative frequency. I personally want the marginal frequency at this point. And I, I want you to find me the margins, like in the margins of the table, <laughs> find me the frequency. In other words, here's the, the row for men, right? What's my frequency for that row? Well, that would be eight, right? And 24 for this. And down here it's two, 11, four, 15. And my grand total altogether is 32. That's the marginal frequency. Now, I kind of fudged it a little bit, but of course we're gonna have to do this with Excel. So let me type this in. This is going to be 4.4 examples because we're gonna do all of them kind of in one fell swoop here. So let me go back here and I'm gonna, I'm actually just gonna copy and paste this whole thing in. Copy, paste, oh, all right. And actually, this is good for you to see because I made an, um, an Excel warning about these. There's a video, but notice what it did. It changed one to four movies into January 4th, which is not what we want at all. And same with um, five through seven. So I'm going to right click, highlight those cells, right click format cells. And I want to change them to, where are they? Text. There it is. Text. Say, okay. And then it just changes it to some random number. Who knows why? But this one was, oh, no, this one was 1 to 4. This one was 5 to 7. There we go. That fixes that. That sometimes happens. Excel um, invariably thinks it's smarter than you are and knows what you want. All right. Now, how could I find these totals a different way? I could say equal sum of this. Close parentheses. And then I actually I can just drag it down. And then for this one, I can say equal sum of these two. I'm gonna grab those two. The bottom or the top one, remember, is the category. Oh, and you can, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm doing this in a lame way, but you can just drag it along. Turn it into the plus sign, drag it. There you go. Same numbers I, I came up with in my head. I know. Okay, so that is your marginal frequency. Matter of fact, I'm gonna label it marginal frequency. That's what we just found. 
All right, now for the next one, I believe we have to find marginal relative frequency. Okay, well, this part's still the same, so let me just copy and paste it in. But we need the marginal relative frequency. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy, because it's just so much easier now that I've got this table built, especially if you're typing it by hand and not copying and pasting like me. That's going to be annoying. Sorry about that. But this is marginal relative frequency. Okay, now how do you get it? It's only in the margins, so the numbers up here are still okay, but I need my marginal numbers to change to relative frequency. So I need 2 divided by that 32. 32 is the grand total, right? That's how many students there were in the class. Now I need that 32 to not change no matter what, right? Because there were 32 students in the class, period. So I'm going to give it dollar signs by pressing F4. So that makes it dollar $F, dollar $5, enter. And then I can drag it over, right? And then I got to do it up here too. Equals that eight divided by that grand total, F4. Give it dollar signs. That's what I mean by F4. Press the button F4. And then the bottom should make one, right? Because 25%, 75% should add up to one. And then these four numbers should all add up to one. And they do. All right, so that's the marginal relative frequency found. And I'm going to go, you know what, I'm just going to copy and paste these numbers in. Let's see if that works. <laughs> so I don't feel like typing them. Gosh, I'm lazy. I know. There we go. All right, so you found the marginal frequency and the marginal relative frequency. Now think about what this means. You now know that 25% of that class was male. You wouldn't necessarily have known that just looking at the wrong numbers, not without doing some calculations. You now know that 47% of the people in that room have seen all eight movies, right? Only 6.25% have seen none of the movies. That's what that marginal relative frequency gives you. The marginal frequency tells you, hey, there were 24 women in the room. There were eight men in the room, that kind of thing, okay? All right, so now we need to find the conditional distribution. And... Um, in case you missed it, I'm setting you up for some probability questions, right? So what's the chances of it being a guy in the room, et cetera, et cetera. All right, so let me copy and paste. I need these numbers down here. I need it here. And honestly, I need it here as well, so I'm, I'm just going to put them in. That way they're in. All right, now this says create a conditional distribution of number of movies by gender. In other words, compare these movie numbers just to the other people in that gender grouping. All right, I'm totally going to make Excel do this, right? So I'm going to do it down here. I'm going to copy. I don't need the bottom row because when you're doing it by gender, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to put it over here. Then maybe you can see it a little bit. Better. This is conditional by gender. All right, so what that means is I'm going to go across the gender row. Let me zoom out just a little bit. There we go. Okay, so these numbers are going to be different. I want to know how common this is in relation to the total. So I'm going to say equals zero divided by that total. And I don't want that number to change because I, wanted, I want to be just looking at that gender total across the row. Well, of course, 0 divided by 8 is still 0, but I'm going to drag it across, and there we go. And then I'm going to do it again. Equals 2, and keep grabbing this old one. Don't, don't start grabbing your new one. Go back to that first one all the time. Divided by 24. That's why I put it in here. Um, it's because I knew we were going to need it. All right, and then I'm going to drag across. Okay. Now think about what this means. This means, like, of the guys... Of when you're just looking at the men, 87% of them had seen all eight movies. But when you're just looking at the women, only 33% had seen all eight movies. Right? Okay, so then they're going to make us do it again. It's going to be conditional again, but instead of, let me copy and paste here. All right, so this is conditional by number of movies. Oh, I better copy and paste this. Hold on. Doo -doo -doo. Oh, I better make these gray. Otherwise, you know, color coding. 
Um, where's my bucket? There he is. There he is. Okay. Copy. Paste. Ah, see, the gray didn't even matter. All right, hold on. Okay, so now I knew this was coming. So, okay, I'm going to keep going back to that first one because that helps. Zero divided by... Now I don't want the... I want to do it by number of movies. So I want to just look at the zero movie people. I'm going to drag it down. Ah, man. Come on. There we go. Now I'm going to look at just the one to four movie people. So I'm going to take one, divide it by the 11, give the 11 dollar signs. And then I'm going to drag it down. And then I'm going to do it again. Divided by four, give it the $4 signs. Go back up, click on that zero, then make the plus sign in the bottom right corner. It's called grabbing the handle. Equals seven divided by the 15, give the $15 signs, and so on. And drag it down. And this farther row right here doesn't really exist, so you can just delete it, right? Because this is the totals down here. And they've got to make one. Now notice, by the end, you've got all 100% of the people that seen never seen the movie, right? And then over here, you've got all 100% of the people that had seen it only one to four times. And over here, you've got, right? And on this one, you've got 100% of the females accounted for by the end, and 100% of the males. That's what one is. All right, so we've got our numbers. I'm going to copy and ah, not there here Let's see if, paste cool all right you know what that's the last thing we were going to do in excel so i'm going to save it that way it's ready for uploading to my math lab so that i'm done with that i can actually close it at this point i'm pretty sure hopefully i didn't need it for anything else <laughs> all right so these two distributions are not the same explain how they're different so let me type that up hold on one second Okay, to clarify this, I kind of chose the same spot in the two um, graphs to see if that would help. So 8 and female, see right there, 33.3%. And then 8 and female here is 53.3. So why are they different? What's going on? Well, the first one was looking at things by gender. So you were only comparing women to other women, right? And in this one... you're comparing all the people that had seen all eight movies to each other. So again, let, I wrote it up here. So the top one had eight out of 24. That's where this number came from. Now, how did that work? Well, there were eight women that had seen all eight movies divided by 24 women total. So if you just select a woman at random in that class, there's only a 33% chance that she's seen all eight movies. The bottom number is saying, hey, if you just grab a person that's seen all eight movies, then there was a 53.3% chance that it was a woman, right? It's like they're two sides of the same coin, right? So one saying, hey, look at the women, grab a woman, her chances of being in this block are 33.3%. And the other one's saying, hey, look at the column, her, the chance that you're going to get a woman is this, okay? All right, so we'll stop there, and I will meet you back here to explain Simpson's Paradox, and then we will be all done. See you then.